Cerebral Autoregulation by Dr. Lisa Del Signore. I just want to talk about the relationship about uh, between cerebral blood flow and cerebral perfusion pressure. Knowing that cerebral blood flow um, is going to be what's actually delivering nutrients to the brain and is separate from cerebral blood volume. However, if you have an increasing cerebral blood flow, you will likely have an increasing cerebral blood volume, which will also potentially increase your intracranial pressure. But you can see here the concept of autoregulation in the brain in that along a wide range of, per of cerebral perfusion pressures, your cerebral blood flow stays relatively constant um, until you hit the extremes either on the left side of the curve or the right side of the curve where the brain is unable to compensate. On the right side of the curve, you can think of this as um, the cerebral perfusion pressure is so high that now the cerebral blood flow just astronomically starts to increase um, due to overwhelming volume. And on the left side here, you can see that um, as the cerebral perfusion pressure drops between a critical level, your cerebral blood flow drops dramatically as well. And we can think about this in the setting of ischemia and probably putting the brain at a high risk um, for hypoxia and, and cell death.